uh, we were, as the second graders, we were going to put on a performance, we were going to put on a program, and uh, one of the, we had to sing. And so we all sang as a class, sitting in our seats. And the teacher looked at me and said, there's something wrong. There's just something wrong. And so she went around and listened to everybody sing. You know, we, we all had to individually sing. And she came to me and she said, you just mouth the words. Don't sing. <laughs> she said that to another one of the little boys in the class. But uh, my, my voice wasn't up to snuff then. And I feel the same way right now. My voice isn't up to snuff. But uh, I'm going to try to do my best anyway. So I apologize if you can't hear me. Now uh, this week, uh, the, the fellow from Myanmar was supposed to speak, uh, you know, a young man from what used to be called Burma, but he got called away on a pastor's conference, so he's unable to speak. So I decided uh, just to do a little presentation on, on the, the resurrection. Now you remember a couple weeks ago, uh, Debbie and... Uh, Debbie and Tom had put forth, they, they, they put out a play, the, the, the Not Ready for Church Time Players uh, in the church, <laughs> <laughs> put on the play. And if you remember the play, uh, the, it started out with, the, with Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and uh, Mary, the, uh, Mary Magdalene, and Salome coming, coming to the grave. They were going to anoint the body with, with, um, with ointment. And uh, they found, they, they were worried that somebody, who was going to roll away the stone. But they got there, and the stone had been all, all rolled away, and the angel said to them that, the, uh, that Jesus had been resurrected. So they ran back to the disciples and said to the disciples that the body's been resurrected. And then uh, Peter and John came forth. Peter, uh, played by Wayne, and John, played by Joey. And George Joey runs runs faster because he's younger than Wayne. And, <laughs> but in the, in the disciples, John was a lot younger than Peter. So, so, John, so John reached the, uh, the, uh, the tomb first, and then the angel said that, 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 that the body's been resurrected. So they went back and they told the, the other disciples and, and Mary, and then Mary Magdalene, played, played by, by Debbie, came forth and uh, went, went to the grave. And uh, an angel, wonderful guy, a wonderful guy played the part of the angel. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a great, it was a great actor. A great actor played the part of the angel. Oh, <laughs> 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 Woman, why do you weep? And then she looked around and she saw Jesus in the form of John Bergman. <laughs> Wonderfully played by John. But she saw the resurrection, the resurrected Jesus in Rabboni. And my, my master, she was so surprised by the resurrection. Well, this morning, let's just talk about a few things that we could learn from this play. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> Our Father, thank you so much for the resurrection of Christ. And uh, Father, thank you so much for the performance put on by, by Debbie and, and Tom and, and, the, and the other people in the church, Lord. Uh, just help us to understand the true meaning of that. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank Debbie. Debbie put a great job on the res history of the resurrection in, from, from the Old Testament. Great job. And then last week you did the, the, uh, the discussion of uh, hearing from the Word of God, having trust in God, having belief in God. It was just wonderful. And I'm going to miss you guys so much. I don't know if you say it. But anyway, what can we learn from this? Uh, have you all been following the uh, opioid epidemic following in, in our country right now? It's just, it's, just, it's devastating. 2016, 64,000 people died of drug overdose. And the uh, Congress has put forth a bill to, to allocate $6 billion in aid to help people on, on drug abuse. Uh, one of the narcotics is anoxazone. And another one is methadone. Anoxazone helps people that are, that are dealing with, with overdose. And Rick Maisano, who was at the, uh, the breakfast yesterday, is a chaplain. He carries anoxazone with him at all times, you know, because th it's, it's, it's a perennial problem. These young people are dying of drug overdose. And then you see other ways that they're dying. You see these, these, these young children getting killed in, 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 at high school down in Florida. It's just, it's just, it's just absolutely tragedy. Of course, that leads to the, the problem of uh, gun control and, uh, you know, what, what are we going to do about all these people getting killed? And then, what, what was a shocking, shocking statistic. Uh, London, England has a higher percentage of murders than New York City. And a lot of these murders are committed by, uh, by stabbings. So the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, is, is advocating uh, banishing all uh, knives. Just, there's this great debate going on in America about whether we should abolish guns because guns are killing people, well, knives are killing people in London. So this is this, 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 we're just almost like tormented by, the, by, by death. I mean, it's, it's not just people killing it, but it's, we're all, I mean, for the time 
time that we're born, you know, you, you, you've got this, this, this sort of Damocles hanging over you, that, that we're all going to die. You know, every time we see people suffering or have some kind of disease, you know, is, this, is this the end? So, so death, is, death is part of life. It's, it's, it's actually, well, actually the end of life, but uh, it's something that is, it's just hanging over our heads at all times. When uh, Mary Magdalene comes to uh, visit and anoint the, the body of Jesus, she's told by the angel that, that Jesus is, is, is risen from the dead. And she turns around and she sees Jesus. She sees Jesus alive. How can that possibly be? We saw him hanging on the cross. He died. They, they thrust a spear into his side. We know that he died. We know that he suffered. He's dead. But there he is standing. He's risen from the dead. The most remarkable thing that's ever happened in the history of the world. It's just the turning point of all life. And what, what, what we can learn from all that is that death doesn't doesn't hang over our heads. It's like it's like the Apostle Paul said in Roman in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Oh death, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? The mortal is taken on immortality. The corrupt is taken on incorruption. The per perishable is taken on imperishable. He's talking about us. We don't have to ever worry about death. That's that's the significance of Easter. That's the significance of the resurrection. You and I never ever again have to worry about death, no matter how sick we are, no matter how diseased we are, no matter how old we are. We don't ever have to worry about death because we just transition from death into life. We just go from this body into our eternal, eternal resurrected body. So that's the first thing that we can learn from that. Death has no hold on us. Death does not hold a grip over us as Christians. The next thing I think we can learn from this is that uh, <clears throat> there's a whole new relationship that we have with God, starting from the resurrection, that's starting from Resurrection Sunday. I was talking with a, f a young friend of mine on, on the social media. He's a young friend. I mean, they're, they're all my daughter's friends. When I, when I got on social media, all my friends are all my daughter's friends that somehow become my friends. But I was talking with him about, uh, we were talking about immigration. And I was, talking, and I was saying that there's a danger in, in too much immigration. You have all these Muslims coming into our country. And if you read the Quran and understand the Islamic religion, it's all about taking over the world. The whole, the whole point of the Quran, the whole point of Islam is that the whole world be converted to Islam. And that's, that's, that's the whole motive. And, and I said to him, you've got you to be careful of that. You've got to be careful of how many Muslims come into the country. The best that you can hope for is, is secular Muslims. To approach a Muslim and say, what religion are you? Well, I'm a Muslim. Well, have you ever, have you ever said the Shahada, the Lord is the Lord, that God is one, and, and Muhammad is his prophet? No, I've never said that. Do you pray five times a day? No, I don't. Do you go to the mosque? No, I don't. They're totally secular. They, they really have no, the, the religion means nothing to them. Well, we, you see the same thing in Christ, Christianity. That uh, Are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Do you go to the church? No. Do you support the church? No. Do you uh, go to a Bible study? No. Do you read the Bible? No. They're just secular. It's, it's just kind of a, a dull, lifeless, lifeless Christianity. And then in our play, we saw that uh, Mary and, and approaches Jesus. And uh, she, she turns to him and she says, Rabboni. And then she goes to hug him. And she says, no, and Jesus looks at her and says, no, don't, don't touch me, for I've not yet ascended into my Father. Well, why, why did he do that? What was the meaning of that? Well, what he was saying to her is that there's a new relationship that we have with God. There's a new relationship you have with me. The old relationship, Mary, is no longer. It's a new relationship. I'm going to ascend to my Father, and when I ascend to my Father, I'm going to send down the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to change everything. That we have, we have immediate access to God. You know, in, in, in the ancient world, in, in, in the Old Testament, when you wanted to talk to God, you, you, you used the priest. The priest is the one that inter, intervened between you and God. And when God spoke to you, he spoke to a prophet. Well, there is no more. We have a brand new relationship. Because of Easter, we have a brand new relationship with God. The Holy Spirit is now present. The Holy Spirit will teach us, direct us, guide us, comfort us in all, in all things. So that uh, it's a whole new way of life for all of us. Because of Easter, we now have immediate access to God. The other thing I, I think about, about it is, is that uh, old things are passed away. You know, the past doesn't doesn't bother us anymore. I was uh, 
<laughs> looking out my kitchen window the other day and I saw a green tennis ball inside my neighbor's yard. Now this is an older lady. I know she doesn't play tennis. That green tennis ball, that belongs to me. I know that's my tennis ball. So when those kids were younger, we had a barrel full of green tennis balls and we would play ball all night. Every night we'd go out and play ball. And then with my dog, I'd hit him the ball and he'd chase it and he'd bring it and retrieve it to me. It was just, just the most wonderful, wonderful experiences. And it just brought back great memories. I almost, almost had like tears in my eyes thinking about it. And then I started thinking about my dog and the, the, the loss of my dog. And all those emotions, all those experiences, that's what comprises us in life. Those, all, all those experiences. Our whole psyche is just made up of past experiences, things that we've done. And for a lot of us, we've, we've done a lot of wrong things. A lot of said, said things wrong, done things wrong, heard people said things we shouldn't have said. And those things can plague us. The resurrection changes all that. Do you remember when... Uh, Jesus appeared before the disciples. He appeared before the disciples. The disciples are just they're enthralled. It's, it's, it's Christ. He's, he's risen from the dead. But there was one disciple that wasn't there. Thomas. And so Thomas, when they, they told Thomas, he goes, we've seen the risen Jesus. And Thomas looked at him and says, well, unless I feel this, unless I see the scars and can feel the place where they, they put the, the, the spear to his side, I'm not going to believe. Later on, Jesus appears to Thomas. And he says, Thomas, feel where they put, the, look at the scars and see where they, see where they pierced the spear in my side. But the fascinating thing is that his body still has the scars. And some Bible expositors believe that Jesus will always have the, the scars. For eternity, he'll, he'll still have those scars. What's, what's the point of having those scars for all eternity? I think the point is simply this. That those things happened to Jesus. He was crucified. He wore the throne of crowns. All these horrible things that happened to him. But it has no effect on him at all. It's all in the past. It has no effect at all. And on Resurrection Day, because of what, because Christ rose from the dead, all these past things that you and I, the things that we've said, the things that we've done, all these, these horrible things that, that have happened to us, these horrible experiences, they have no effect on us at all. You know, Easter is, a, Easter is a fun day. I remember, you know, the, the egg, the egg finding, the egg finding contest that they have, and, and I remember when I was a little boy, we, mom would always buy me a new suit every Easter. We go to church, a new suit. My sister get a new dress. We all dressed up for Easter, and we come home and have the Easter, the Easter meal, the, the ham, and just just a glorious fun day. And of course, the Easter bunny, Easter bunny always came to our house. He always hid the baskets. We had to go over, we had to search all over the house to try to find Easter bunnies, baskets. And what's funny is he still did it when when, when my my kids were young, the Easter Bunny still came into our house and hit all the, the Easter Bunny's baskets for the kids and they had to go around and find them. And what's, what's really funny is that the Easter Bunny still sends baskets to my children, even though my children have moved away. And my one daughter lives in North Carolina, the Easter Bunny leaves a basket for her and we have to wrap it up and we have to send it down. And I can't figure out why the Easter Bunny doesn't just take it to North Carolina with him when it's trip there. <laughs> but, uh, but it's a fun time. It's a great time. I think the important thing is that we don't forget the, the real significance of Easter and all these fun activities. The real significance of Easter is simply this. Death has been conquered. Death no longer holds a, holds a, a grip on us. You know, we, there, for, for the Christians, there is no such thing as death because of Easter. Because of Easter, we have a brand new relationship with God. Not like the Old Testament where people had to have a priest intervene or a prophet intervene. We have immediate access to God. We are a priesthood of all believers. And the past is all done away with. All your, all the, the sins, the, the hurts, the pains, the problems you face in life. It's all been done away with because of Easter. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your grace and your love, Lord. Thank you so much for the Easter celebration, Lord. Thank you so much for the resurrection of Christ, Lord. And uh, Father, thank you so much for the gathering here today and uh, it's been a cold icy day Lord no matter what Lord Jesus was resurrected from the dead because of that death has been annulled we have a brand new relationship with you and all the things in the past are done away with in Jesus name Amen Amen, amen. let's see we get some prayer requests